بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا إنك سميع مجيب الدعاء اللهم أني أعوذ بك من علم لا ينفع وقلب لا يخشع ونفس لا تشبع ودعاء لا يسمع ربنا لا تزق قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي يا ربي أمين جزاكم الله خير for coming يا أيها الناس إنا خلقناكم من ذكر وأنت وجعلناكم شعوبا وقبائل لتعارفوا إن أكرمكم عند الله أتقاكم I have no doubt that every woman in this room and probably everybody listening to us know this verse. If there is any verse you hear, it's one, this one of the most common one. All people, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying this, it's in Surah Al-Hujurat at the end, and he's addressing humanity. It's not Muslim. It's not, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu. It is not, Ya ayyuhal mu'minun. Ya ayyuhal nas, you and me. Inna Allah, we, khalaqnakum, created you, dhakari wa unta, male and a female. وَجَعَلْنَاكُمْ شُعُوبًا وَقَبَائِلٍ And we have made you nations and tribes. Look around you. Look to your right and look to your left and how different we are. And if you still don't know we are different, then you didn't listen to the most beautiful talk I just heard. We need to listen a lot to these to live reality. And why did Allah do that? Every time I read this verse, I was like, didn't Allah... Is Allah not able of creating all of us same, same color, same shape, same length, same height, same eye color? Why? Two reasons. It's in the verse itself. One is obvious and one is hidden. The obvious, to know each other. First thing you all have to ask, and then I'll come to the best, because that's part of the best. How many people you know as a friend that does not fit your own description? That does not speak the same language? That does not eat the same food? That does not look like you? That does not share the same background? It's very little. Am I right? Wow, you have a non-Muslim friend? You have a white friend? I'm an Arab. You have a non-Arab friend? This is why he created you and me in different ways. And he is able of creating us any way he wants. Subhana. Then the hidden, which comes to the best. The best among you, you all know. It's, this is how you translate it, actually. Or the most honorable one. It depends how you want to translate. At Qaqum. The most honorable, the best among you, not women or men. Nothing to do with gender. Taqwa. Why am I wasting my time about I am a woman or I am a man? Did you get my point? It's not going to make any difference in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Zero. If I am in front of him, subhana, he's not going to look at me, I am Haifa. Or I am Muhammad. He's going to look at me as what? His creation. His servant. Regardless, he or she. So why am I wasting my time in you? This is the trap you all have to get out of. He probably did not expect me to say this. But we need to get out of this trap. Don't fall into the gender. Look at the bigger picture. Right? وَإِذْ قَالَ رَبُّكَ لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ What did he say? إِنِّي جَاعِلٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ خَلِيفَة Did he define who's the Khalifa? Did he say a man? Did he say a woman? Did he say an Arab? Did he say a non-Arab? Why do we fall in this trap? Why? It's me, it's you. This is the first thing you all have to start rethinking. 
change the way you think and look individually. Individually, are you falling into this trap? The answer is, I want to hear it. Yes. yes, yes. Whether I am in the trap of being the victim or I am in the trap of being the one who's going to carry the justice against the victim, both of them, I am missing the point. Because what it should be my point? I want all of you to think with me. Why I am in this world? The question was raised in more than one speaker. Why I'm here? To have fun? To prove I am the best? To prove we are equal? Is that why he created me? I need to hear the answer. Why did he create me? And what does worship mean? To know him. To know him. وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ And you go and read the commentary. العبادة هنا is not worship. Because if you translate worship, you absolutely have narrowed this verse. Oh, I need to pray. Oh, I need to fast. Oh, I need to wear my hijab. You missed it. 80% of this verse, you missed it. Know Allah. I had this discussion recently with someone. A lot of people have dreams, which the dreams are beautiful. And they said, we need to bring Medina back in our masajid. It's a beautiful dream. And they looked at me and they, they, they sensed I am, I have something different. And I'm going to ask you the question I asked. When did Medina start? After how many years? Roughly, roughly. Right? Why didn't Medina start first? Isn't Allah capable? And what was the difference between Medina and Mecca? Not the cities, the Muslim Ummah. As you heard, Al Ansar, the helper, the lover, everybody loves each other. We don't need Medina, this is what I said. We don't need Medina. What do we need? Why? Because we don't have him inside us. This is what Rasul did in all his time in Mecca. Even Salah didn't come first. It's Ya Ayyuhal Nas Abudullah, Abudu Rabbakum. Worship your Lord. Know who is your Lord. And this is our problem. And I'm not going to say it's a woman problem. I'm going to be very honest. It's a humanity problem. We don't know who's Allah. Right? If I ask you who's Allah, you're going to tell me he's the one who created me. But does you really believe he's the one who created you? Do you really believe in this? And I say, okay, give me another thing. And you're going to give me all the 99 names, if even more. And you say, he's a Razzaq. And I said, really? She looked at me. I was like, what did, she, what did I say? I said, is he really a Razzaq? Is he really a Razzaq? I want to hear the answer. Really? Then why do you call somebody else when you need something? It's sad. It's painful. You just said he's a Razzaq. Why do you call someone else? You just said he's a Qawi. You give me any of the names you know. And then immediately he tests me and he tests you. Immediately. And I, without me knowing, showing him, and he knows, but to show me how hypocrite I am in my tongue. He's a Shafi. He's the one who cure. And when I get sick, what do I do? Do I call him first? Do I turn to him, Ya Rabbi, please cure me? Ya Allah, make this tablet that I'm putting in my mouth works? No. Who is the best physician? And you start texting and on the groups. This is what we are missing. We women, and again, I'm speaking because I'm speaking to women. What we are missing these days to be the best. And I'm going to give you some examples of the best. Some of them you don't even know the name, and I don't know the name. The best 
is the woman who her focus in life is not her children, is not her husband, is not her career, is not her beauty, it's not her house. It's only one answer. Al-Wahid. The one. The one. How many of you, and don't show me hands, this is between you and Allah, and He knows. How many of you can say it confidently, as if she is in front of Allah, and says, Ya Rabbi, I lived for you. I did everything for you. I got married for you. I had children for you. I studied, worked hard to make my career for you. I wanted to be educated for you. Memorize the Quran for you. Islamic studies started Islamic institutions, you name it, for you. How many can claim this now and in front of Allah will say it? The answer is, if I want to be very honest with everybody, if I say this, am I right? Am I honest with myself? That's what's missing, ladies, my beautiful sisters, young and old. Don't blame the young. I stopped a long time ago blaming the young. You know why? Because what they are seeing in me, what are they seeing? And I'm not defending them, but it's again reality. So here you are, you are in Pleasanton, let's say in St. Louis, let's say in Southern California, and you are this pious woman, real pious woman, everybody knows, mashallah. And then they accused you of the most painful, degrading accusation a woman can have. And what is that as a Muslim woman? Exactly. Oh, she has an affair. What will happen to you? Answer me. What will happen to you? Everybody is talking. It's the talk of the town. Everyone, but no one to say this to you. But you can see it, you can feel it. You know, you, they, you come in and they stop talking. And then your husband come to you. And they say, to, he says to you in your face, in front of your fa father and mother, tell me, if you did it, ask Allah to forgive you. Feel what I'm saying. And if you didn't do it, say it. What will you answer? I want to hear it. What will you say? Honestly. Hasbi Allah wa ni'mal wakil. If you know this in the Arabic language, when you say hasbi Allah wa ni'mal wakil, meaning you have given up, and I'm not going to even answer, and may Allah punish you. Because Sayyidina Ibrahim said that when he was thrown in the fire. What else you will do? Anxiety, panic attack, you're gonna cry. Am I right? Angry, how dare? What do you think of me? Look at yourself, and on and on and on and on. Right? How many will turn and says, you allowed it to happen, Ya Allah? What are you teaching me? What do you want me to say? What should I do? Whose story was this? What did she answer? That's what I need to hear. You all knew the answer, Alhamdulillah. That's the best. To me, this is the best. In all the stories of Sayyidina Aisha, everything you know about Sayyidina Aisha, this is story, tell me, what a strong woman should be. What a woman of Allah should be. And one, what a woman of opinion should be. What did she say? 
And who said that to her was a Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam. I will be dead. Every time I read this, I, I just can't imagine. I'm a woman, you are a woman. You know how painful is this? Let alone you're innocent, let alone it's coming from your husband, let alone your husband is the best of the creation. Alayhi salatu wasalam. What did she say? You need to memorize that statement. You want to be strong? You want to be, you have your opinion? You want to be a woman of Allah? You want to be the best? What did she say? The meaning. She said this to her father, mother, and husband. Sayyidina Abu Bakr, Ummu Ruman. She said, it's already in your heart. And if I said, I am innocent, and Allah knows I am innocent, see what came out of the mouth. You will not believe me. And if I say I did it, and I didn't do it, you will believe me. And I'm not going to say a word other than what the father of Ya'qub, she couldn't even, father of Ya'qub, that's exact, she couldn't even remember his name, said. And she turned her back to Rasul and to Sayyidina Abu Bakr, her father, and to Umm Roman, and said, فَصَبْرٌ جَمِيلٌ وَاللَّهُ الْمُسْتَعَانُ عَلَى مَا تَصِفُونَ what a woman is this? Beautiful patient, and Allah will help me about what you are saying about me. And she turned her back. This is she. Go and read this in the Quran. In every commentary of Hadith al Ifk, Ayat al Ifk, you will hear this story. It's, it's narrated by her. And then she said, Wallahi. I never thought, look at this. I never thought I am, she, worthy in the sight of Allah that he will send the Quran to be recited till the end of the time to tell me I am innocent. And then immediately that page of Surah An-Nur, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ جَاءُوا بِالْإِفْكِ عُصْبَةٌ مِّنْكُمْ لا تحسبوه شرا لكم بل هو خير لكم لكل امرئ منهم ما اكتسب من الاثم والذي تولى كبره منهم له عذاب عظيم. And she said, I could see Rasul عليه الصلاة والسلام Quran is being revealed because he changed and you know what happens to him when Quran was revealed. And then he starts smiling. And he looked at her and he said, Nazar, the meaning of your innocence came from, the, from Allah, from the heavens. Everybody is happy, right? Wait. The impact is not done yet. The best is to the last. So her father and her mother, Qumi, get up. Go to Rasul She said, no, I am only going to thank the one who sent my innocence. It's Allah. Where are you from that example? A woman, 2022, 20, live in the United States, live in California, educated. You have everything. Where are you from this? What is the difference between me, you, all of us, and Sayyida Aisha? Don't tell me she's the wife of Rasul She was tested because she was the wife of Rasul What is the difference? I need to hear it and I want you to think. How can I be like the finger of Sayyida Aisha? Finger, nail. One hair. How? 
You know what's missing? It's not because they don't let women go to the masjid. And I have my own opinion about that. And I'm one of the people who says, Don't prevent the servant of Allah, the she servant of Allah, from the houses of Allah. But that's not the issue. The issue is not the masjid, believe me. The masjid is not because of lack of education, believe me. You know what's the issue? It's me. It's my nafs. It's me. Everything is way more. I say this to me. I'm talking to me, not to you. Everything in this life is more important than him. I think of everyone else first and then him. I only think of him when I need him. تعرف إلى الله في الرخاء يعرفك في الشدة. Know Allah at time of adversity. He will know you at time of. No, I'm sorry. Learn about Allah and turn to Allah at time of prosperity. He will know you at time of adversity. That's a Sayyida Aisha. Do you know about her ibadah? About her act of worship? How long a man came? Of course, she was a faqih, she was knowledgeable. You all know that. So a man came to ask her a question, duha time, during the day. And then she found her praying. Duha, to rukat. He was waiting and waiting and waiting because she was still praying. Another man came to him and says, Oh, you're waiting for her to finish? Go and do whatever you need to do and come back. She may be finished. How long is your salah? If you pray five times a day. How long is your dua? How long is your reading the Quran? And how long you spend time on the WhatsApp, social media, in the kitchen, it's painful. It's so painful, young and old, and I'm not speaking to the young, I'm speaking to everybody. The best, the best is that woman who I heard it from a young girl 20 years ago. We were in an Islamic conference. We were in line asking the sheikh. She looked at him and says, Ya sheikh, I heard this. I have decided to go to Jannah. Subhanallah, I was like, what? You know, what do we normally decide? I am going to go to medical school. I am going to move. I'm going to buy a house. I am going to have another baby. I am going to, you know, this is how we decide. This is major decisions. And, and I looked and I was like, what made her put this goal? I haven't seen her. I, I actually saw only her back. I don't even know how she looks like. But I can tell she's young. Young, young. Maybe 17, 18, 19. How many of us, your goal, your goal is Jannah? I should have asked you before I said this. Man amila saliha min dhakarin aw untha wa huwa mu'min fa'ulaika yadkhulun al-jannah يُرْزَقُونَ فِيهَا بِغَيْرِ حِسَابٍ Whomsoever does a good deed, man and a woman, why do you worry about it? Why do you worry about it and you waste your energy and think about it? He said it. Read your Qur'an. ذَكَرٍ أَوْ أُنْثَى Man and a woman. But you need to do the first part. مَنْ عَمِلَ صَالِحًا وَهُوَ مُؤْمِنٍ and you're a believer, not a believer. I believe in Allah. And the first test Allah gives you, good or bad, by the way, good or bad, you are praying for your son to get married. You're praying for your daughter to get married. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send exactly your dua you did on the night of Al-Qadr, Allah send it. And the first thing you do is what? 
you throw this wedding with every disobedience of him. Every disobedience of him. And you want to be the best. ألا إن سلعة الله غالية ألا إن سلعة الله جنة What Allah has is very expensive. It's very expensive. It's very hard. It's Jannah. That's the best. That's the best. You want to be the best? That's the best. You want to talk about equality? I don't like this word. It annoys me. Honestly. Always. I was like, why do you think, why do I need to care about this? He said it. إِنَّ الْمُسْلِمِينَ وَالْمُسْلِمَاتِ وَالْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتِ Right? وَالْخَاشِعِينَ وَالْخَاشِعَاتِ وَالصَّادِقِينَ وَالصَّادِقَاتِ وَالصَّابِرِينَ وَالصَّابِرَاتِ وَالْمُتَصَدِّقِينَ وَالْمُتَصَدِّقَاتِ وَالصَّائِمِينَ وَالصَّائِمَاتِ وَالْحَافِظِينَ فُرُوجَهُمْ وَالْحَافِظِينَ فُرُوجَهُمْ والحافظات والذاكرين الله كثيرا والذاكرات What will happen? أعد الله لهم مغفرة وأجرا عظيمة Every description and I'm going to go through it because that's the best This is the best Muslim, true Muslim, men and women Believer, men and women Surrender to Allah, men and women Patient, men and women. Truthful, men and women. Sa'imi, fasting, Ramadan is coming, men and women. Charity, men and women. Guard your private part, and not necessarily only private part. Everything else gets to that direction. Guard it, men and women. Yes, he does need to lower her gaze, but you need to lower your gaze first. I, a long time ago, I get very irritated from blaming others. This is not Islam. It's always me, number one. He's looking at me. You lower your gaze. Don't look at him, says, you lower your gaze. You lower your gaze. And show him by action, you're the Muslim woman. وَالذَّاكِرِينَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا They remember Allah a lot. Where is your dhikr? Two minutes after salah, we couldn't sit. Two minutes. And you tell me you want to be the best, and I need to go to the masjid? Well, here you are. Alhamdulillah. Masjid is very welcoming, beautiful, beautiful woman, education, room. Where are you? Don't blame anyone. As a shaitan said, this is one of the powerful verses in the Quran in Surah Ibrahim. The meaning of it, لا تلوموا أنفسكم لا تلوموني ولوموا أنفسكم Don't blame me. Shaitan is going to talk on the day of judgment. He's going to look at you and me. He says, don't blame me. Blame yourself. ما كان لي عليكم من سلطان I had no power over you إلا except دعوتكم I called you فاستجبتم لي You answered Don't pray there's still time You said yes Let's keep looking at the, uh, the social media with all the haram You said yes Right? Don't put your hijab You said yes Let's do this You said yes I had no, no control over you. I called you, you answered. Don't blame me. Blame yourself. I will not come to your rescue. And you will not help me. Do you want to be that person? Can I afford it? Do I have an answer? Let me give you, and I will end up with this, some examples. And you, and, and you just look at yourself. And 
there's a book called Sifatul Safwa, a special of the special. And there is a whole volume about men and a volume about women. And the volume about women, half of it have no names. And some of the men's side has no names. They call it Abida. Abida, you know what? A she worshiper. So let's look at some of them. Some of them has names and some are not. And this is a woman said the following. And she, where are we? She said, I am so surprised. This is a woman. I'm so surprised that an eye can sleep and knows there is a long sleep waiting for her. What makes you say this? What makes you say this? This is not something comes you read. This is not something you think of. This is something you feel and you ponder and you live that you cannot but think this way. This is a woman, her focus is, her focus is, Akhirah, Jannah, I'm going to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm going to be there. Allah said this in Surah Al-Mu'minun. How long you lived in this life? We're going to be asked. And we're going to say, قَالُوا لَبِثْنَا يَوْمًا أَوْ بَعْضَ يَوْمًا فَاسْأَلِ الْعَادِينَ And we will say, Ya Allah, we lived a day or two. Ask those who are counting. قَالَ إِنْ لَبِثْتُمْ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا لَوْ كُنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ you stayed little at the time, but you didn't know. Focus. You want to be the best. You want to worship Allah. You want success in this dunya. You want success in the akhirah. Don't waste your energy about everything else. Focus on Him and Him only. Those of you who were studying with us in the year of knowledge, they have heard this statement from me. Probably, I think now we are thousand times. And I always say this, and I say this to myself before anyone. Everything, everything you do, you say, you don't do, you don't say, has to go through this circle. And this circle is Allah. Subhana. Is he okay with it? Is he happy with it? Then go. If he is not, the answer is no, even if this whole world will say yes, then you are the best. Then you are Sayyidah Aisha. Then when Allah tests you, you will respond, Allah al musta'an wa ala ma tasifun, and Allah will help me. And when you talk about Sayyidah Maryam, and I was listening to it, beautifully said, you know what came to my mind? Why did Allah choose her? It's, the, the verse that was shared with you was in Ali Imran. But if you read the page before, if you read the page before, before Allah said, Ya Maryam, inna Allah astafaki wa tahharaki wa astafaki ala nisa il alameen. Before Allah told her, Maryam, you're chosen. What did he say? The page before. Kullama dakhala alayha zakariya al-mihraba wujada indaha rizqa. Every time Sayyidina Zakariya enter, enter where? Where? Watching TV? On her WhatsApp? Talking with her friends? Shopping? It's not, it's not funny. It's painful. You know why? Because I want to be like Sayyidah Maria, but I want the end. I don't want to go through the path. I want to be like Sayyidah Aisha. And I think it's the other people problem. It's the other people putting me this. No. I don't want to go through that path. I want the quick result. I don't want to get up at 3 o'clock in the morning and stand on my feet and do two hours of qiyam. So Allah looks at me and says, Stafay tuki. I chose you. La. But I can do three hours on the internet, chatting, going through. So the best is the examples you heard all day today. But the question has to be, what do I need to do in this day and age to be them, to get that result? 
and I will end up with this. And I remind myself of this verse almost daily, if not more. وَالَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا فِينَا لَنَهْدِيَنَّهُمْ سُبُولَنَا وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَمَعَ الْمُحْسِنِينَ Those who struggle, look at the word, jihad. Allah used jihad. It's not about fighting. There's no war here. Jahad, struggle, fina, for Allah. لَنَهْدِيَنَّهُمْ سُبُولَنَا He will take you, guide you. Don't worry. وَاللَّهِ الَّذِي لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا هُمْ And I said by his name, if I was a Sayyidah Maryam and you were Sayyidah Aisha, Wallahi al-Masajid will be open to us. It would, we will have our beautiful places. You know why? Because he will make it happen. But he wants to see it me first. I want it, and I'm ready to work for it, and I'm ready to give up things for him. You do that and see the wonders Allah will show you. But you want to be in your comfort zone, and you don't want to be different as beautifully you heard. What difference is mean? I lived it also. When you are the only woman, the only, the only, and I'm sure you lived it too. The only, the only woman in that room looks this way. The only woman in that room doesn't speak this way. The only woman in that room, and I kept on saying, Tawba lil ghurba. You know what I just said? Ja'a al-Islam gharibah wa sayaudu gharibah. Islam came as a stranger and will come back as a stranger. Look around you. Aren't we strangers? And what did he say to you and me and every stranger? Tawba lil ghurba. It's a place in Jannah. Don't you want to be that person? Why do you worry? Why do you waste your energy? Allahumma arina al-haqqa haqqan wa arzuqna attiba'a wa arina al-baatida baatida wa arzuqna ishtinaba Rabbana la tuzuq qulubana ba'da idh hadaytana wa hab lana man ladunka rahma innaka anta al-wahab Rabbi al-hamni rujdi wa qini sharra nafsi Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Kareem, Ya Hiyu, Ya Qayyum and to tara makanana you see our place wa tasma'u kalamana and you hear our voices and what we are saying Ya Allah, arina al-haqqa haqqa show us truth as truth and show and help us to follow it. Show us falsehood as falsehood and help us to stay away from it. Inna ka sami'un qareebun mujibu dua. Jazakumullahu khayran. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi tasliman kathira. Ameen takbir.